Welcome to the Four Bodies Podcast. Oh, it doesn't actually cost any money to run this thing, so it just it goes it goes to like a slush fund, right? So you give me the money, and then I'll hang on to it, and then we'll just, I'll just make sure that it's used, uh, you know, in a discretionary fashion. Do you think Seven Elevens have a slush fund? I would hope they do. They definitely have. The slush fund is probably in the slush fund. Or do they call it a Slurpee fund? Wouldn't that be the best way? Like if you were going to hide something in a 7-Eleven, you had like all your diamonds stored in the Slurpee machine? No, it would gum up the internal gears and stuff. It'd be a disaster. You would have they, like- it's like a, there's a spinning paddle that agitates that Slurpee mix and you don't want to put anything in there. Not in the mix itself. I just mean within like the the machine, the mechanisms of the machine. You could even have it like a modded out where they have like a secret con- chamber for your diamonds to go, right? I mean, you could do anything, I right? Would, if if you had I a bunch would, of diamonds. I would put it in a safety deposit box. I feel like having it like in a convenience store is just not, not as safe as a safety deposit box. I don't know, Dave. I don't know if people are here to have me tell you about you know how to invest all of our monies here so we should probably welcome everybody to the show so hey everybody thanks so much thanks for uh, joining us tonight it's uh monday november 27th about 9 45 p.m and uh dave hey how you doing tonight there buddy what's up alex i feel like we could have an episode one of these days where we talk about the top four hiding spots for contraband oh like on a person i wasn't thinking that i was thinking like like a physical place <laughs> <laughs> your body uh but if you want to do that too we could it could really only go so many places right let's be honest on your <laughs> yeah on your person yeah i'm talking like in a house or a place of business yeah i think like a shark cave or something like that somewhere like deep in the water or it's got to be in, in an accessible place where you can get it you know get to it easily like let's say somebody says hey you you need to produce these diamonds or else and then you're like well i gotta go diving for them that wouldn't be very convenient dave why are we talking about hiding contraband right now we got to be talking you, aren't we going to be talking about the biggest surprise qbs of the league so far aren't you, we that are we here to do that you brought it up but yeah let's get cracking right to yeah. the top four most surprising quarterbacks uh mid-season mm. and so this is your topic right where do you come up with this one uh I feel like we both talked about this, Alex. I mean, like we we review these scripts, okay? And then you always act like you've never heard of it before. But um, okay, I'll play along. Yeah, I just came up with this idea all by myself. Top four most surprising quarterback developments through the midseason here. And so we have four of them. I'm going to handle two. You handle two. And let's get cracking right with uh, the fourth most surprising quarterback development midseason. Yeah, Dave, I'm not going to let you just like, you know, totally divert from what the subject was where you're like springing this on me once again. But as long as, you know, you're going to put it on my shoulders and I've got to carry the burden of the fourth pick and the second pick, you'll take you'll take the third pick and the first pick. So I guess in my mind, just like downloading some information right here, maybe Josh Dobbs, right? The Pastronaut, isn't that his nickname? How do you feel about that nickname, the Pastronaut? That's a, that's a good one. I, I do like that nickname. Um, I don't want to take, I don't want to steal your thunder. So you go ahead and proceed right off the top of your head. What are the, the takeaways for Josh Dobbs it. as the, the fourth most surprising mid season quarterback development right now? He is, he's in a second, uh, team this season. He's on his second team this season. He has 362 attempts and 230 completions. It's about a 66% somewhere around there. Uh, 22, 16 passing yards, which isn't incredible or anything. Now he's got 12 touchdowns and six interceptions. So a two to one ratio, not exactly great either. But if you're playing in like new systems, this is it like his fifth team in two years, isn't it? He has played for seven total teams, but he was with the Browns twice and he was with the Steelers twice. So he's also rushing it. He's got 389 rushing yards himself. Now this is the quarterback, right? And I think that's the, one of the biggest upsides with this guy is that he's, you know, he can throw it. He's he literally studied and did an internship at a space firm. And so he, he you know, he studied space. And so he, he can create space apparently with his running. So he's got some moves, right? I just, he's playing right now. The Bears and the Vikings are playing right now. So he's over my shoulder. He's making a pass to Hawkinson. He's on target. The guy, like, what? how do you let this guy just not be your backup quarterback? 
You know, the funny thing is the the Browns uh, traded him away to the Cardinals before the season started, and I bet right. you they're kicking themselves right now. Yeah. Because because Josh Dobbs is he's going to the moon, baby. I mean, he's playing great. And if he was with the Browns right now, they they could have a shot. But but now not so much. Now, I think people understand that we're referring to him being the pastronaut, right? His nickname and that he studied space. Like I said, he did the internship with NASA. Did and- you say space firm? <laughs> Yeah, space firm. What I wasn't space? gonna, I wasn't gonna mention them at first. I didn't want to give them the the honor of mentioning them, but I, I did. I didn't say it, and uh, you know, the, the, we did figure out the difference. Um, what two weeks ago, the difference between the pastronaut and Matt Patricia, right? What was it? It was uh, oh. Dobbs. He studied space, and Patricia took up space. And, yeah, I yeah. feel like you weren't gonna uh, give NASA the satisfaction of a mention. Did you not? Um, did you not get your internship there when you applied? I didn't. No, Th- okay. I didn't even apply. They sent out like a precursory letter to like tell me not to apply. That's even worse. I think if you if you get the rejection letter, that's bad. But if you get the don't even bother applying letter, that's mm-hmm. terrible. So yeah. I, I I would be holding a grudge too if I were you. I never got the don't apply letter. Yeah, well, good for you, Dave. But you went to a smarty pants school in Flint, so. Well, what was what was what's Dobbs' record like? How many wins does he have? So he's, he was one and six with the Cardinals. He's two and one with the Vikings right now. So he's a pretty safe quarterback. I mean, Minnesota they didn't trade away all their players at the trade deadline, and so they they retain they retain their their players, and you know they're hoping to make a push for the division, of course. So the crazy thing, just to wrap up this Dobbs point is uh, he he was traded for a six-round pick. Arizona, we, we mentioned this already, but I'm still, like, astonished that Arizona got a six-round pick in return for him. Like, what is going on? Yeah, I think he's he's a um a good fit at number four. Statistically, not not doing very well if you think about the number of wins, but he was playing for the Cardinals, and you can't expect much. He does have a couple key wins for the Vikings right now, keeping their season alive. He has thrown a decent amount of interceptions, but he has six rushing touchdowns. That's pretty good. So for a journeyman quarterback at this point in his career, bouncing from team to team and and second team this season, I think, yeah, he's definitely a surprising development for a quarterback landscape. So I think it's a great choice at number four there, Alex. Great job. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave. I appreciate that. I just thought of it and it came, uh, you know, to my mind. Dave, why don't you take us to number three? Who do you have? So this is a player that I don't think anybody knew about coming into the season. I got to admit, I I wasn't familiar with him at all. I think I heard the name and I heard the team and I automatically discounted him because I thought, well, that's a terrible team. This guy doesn't have much fanfare coming into the season, but actually he is currently the sixth rank quarterback in fantasy right now. Well, tell us already who, 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 Dave. I'll, I'll, t- I'll get there in a second. Okay. So his team right now, they're only four and seven and um, you know, they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but he's getting it done on volume. He's got four. Who are you talking? Tell me, Dave. I'll tell you in a second. Just tell give me. me a second. I'll get to it. 486 passing attempts. That's insane. So he's getting it done on volume. It's quarterback Sam Howell of the Washington Whatchamacallit Commander Redskins football team. Okay? So nobody saw this coming. All right? He's got uh, 3,339 passing yards. And that was 486 attempts, 323 completions. Now his uh, touchdowns, 18. He's got 13 interceptions. Not great. But um, he does have 220 yards rushing and uh, three rushing touchdowns. He's making the most out of a, a not a great situation. Um, he does have some decent weapons like Brian Robinson, surprisingly, is the number four ranked running back this That's year. Wild. Which I remember when he was on the board when we were doing the fantasy draft, I kept joking that he was a uh, Bijan Robinson still on the board. And little to you know my satisfaction, he so whoever swooped him up is now getting points with them. Yeah, my my buddy Rob Russell has him in Dynasty. He's got Brian Robinson and Bijan Robinson. Mm. And on CBS it just says B Robinson. Yeah, so he's got right. two B Robinsons. And, more, and actually more, surprisingly yeah. that sounds like a good team, right? He's got two great running backs. He still only has two wins on the year. So he he's rebuilding. Uh I digress. Sam Howell's surprisingly doing pretty good with the Commanders. Now, you know, you can't really expect them to get too many wins because they're just a perennially dysfunctional organization. 
and they're pretty much never going to be in playoff contention. But if he's your fantasy quarterback and that's all that matters, he's he's giving you a decent amount of points and you probably didn't have to invest very much to get him. So if you did get him, you probably drafted him in like the 15th round or maybe you picked him up as a free agent. And that means you have more draft capital to go towards actual other players so if you've got sam Howell, you're probably you're probably doing pretty good in fantasy i wonder right who has them in our league well i i have them in our league oh you son of a <laughs> beep 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 and i just want to point out real quick a couple weeks ago i said i offered a trade to uh harold for trevor lawrence and you told me that i was a terrible person and since then trevor lawrence has put up two like back-to-back games of over 30 points in fantasy so that mm. just goes to show you never really know what will happen in a trade and it looked yep. lopsided yep. at first and you judge me for it but if harold mm. had taken that trade judge he'd be hard. doing all right right now Hey, Dave, I just, we were talking about the whatchamacallits, uh, Commander Redskins and, oh, and Washington football teamers. And I, I heard something on uh, Bill Simmons and Sal, Cousin Sal, they talked about uh, Ron Rivera, Ron Rivera and his nickname. And he was always known as Riverboat Ron, right? Because he was always gambling. He'd make these gambles. But they nicked him now because he hasn't been taking as, as many gambles. He's just playing it safe and really like traditionally. Now they call him Rowboat Ron. And I just thought that was great. I just thought that was a good one. I like that. <laughs> Rowboat Ron. They just fired, uh, isn't Jack Del Rio one of their coordinators? Didn't they just fire him? I can't confirm that, but it seems like why wouldn't he be there, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, number three overall as far as uh, surprising quarterbacks for the midseason, uh, Sam Howell, quarterback of the Commanders. Okay, Dave, I just want to put a I just want to put a little bow on this, and I just when we're talking about Sam Howell, then it reminded me of that one you know country ditty. It's like where did he come from? Where did he go? Where did he come from? Sam Howell. Oh, the, the producers are chirping in my ear. Oh, we got to move on. Okay, number saying we're going to cut that two. out. Big surprise, especially from the beginning of the season, right? He looked like the worst quarterback in the league. I think we all know who we're thinking of. Patrick Mahomes. No, not Patrick Mahomes. Russell Wilson. Good God, he looked awful at the beginning of the year. He probably had like a hangover from last year's team with Nathaniel Hackett. And, you know, it's he's he's in a brand new system with Sean Payton. And I'm sure Sean Payton's system's not that easy to understand. And Russell Wilson, obviously, being in the league for as long as he has, he can pick up systems, but you're still familiarizing yourself with with something new. You've got you know some new players who are coming in, all new coaching, right? So you know it it takes some time for players to get uh, on track, and it looks like he has right now. He's the 13th uh, ranked QB, believe it or not, and he's got 319 attempts, 218 completions, 2,200 yards of passing, passing yards. 20 TDs to four interceptions. Patrick Mahomes has more interceptions than he does. Russell Wilson's stats are better. He's also rushing a little bit, but, you know, most of it's coming through the air. He, I mean, if you see him rush, when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit. 53 yards. Have you seen him try to run? He's. It's like he... <laughs> last, last couple of years, it seems like he's been scared to take off running, which that was... That was a staple of the Russell Wilson mantra in uh, Seattle was like he he was so elusive and he could escape and extend plays. And I don't know if it's age or if it's a system. Maybe he's just reluctant to take off. He just doesn't have the juice anymore on on foot, but he's making up for it with his arm now. And yeah, like uh, like we said before on, on previous episodes, um, everyone kind of wrote him off, left him for dead. And uh, he's finally taken Broncos country you know, they're riding finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're six and five now. I mean, they got beat for anybody who doesn't remember. They got beat 70 to 20 against the Miami Dolphins, the probably the worst historic loss in NFL history. And they're in the playoff hunt, right? It's, pre it's pretty impressive. The, you know, he might, Russell might even be the player, the comeback player of the year. So that'd be interesting to see if, you know, what, where they put him, if he's going to be ranked somewhere in there. I'm sure he'll be, he'll be mentioned somewhere along there. Now, Dave, we got to keep moving. Let's get to number one. You're going to take this one by the, by the bulls, by the horns, right? Why don't you tell us who you got there at number one? Yeah, I'll take a uh, number one right now is actually, he's the fifth ranked quarterback. Okay. And I will tell you, um, I'll spoil it a little bit. You guys probably already know who we're talking about. He was maybe the third or fourth ranked rookie coming out of college, right? And so nobody really had many expectations of him. 
But um, right now, he's a fifth-ranked quarterback in fantasy. He's doing great. If you have him on your team, you're lucky. And um, we're talking about C.J. Stroud, quarterback of the Houston Texans. Right now, 391 passing attempts, uh, 249 completions. He's got uh, 3,200 passing yards, 19 <laughs> touchdowns, and only five interceptions. That's pretty good for uh, for any quarterback, let alone a rookie. I don't know if it's a... Uh, if it's him or if it's the coaching or the scheme or the organization, I don't think many people uh, expected the Texans to do this well developing a rookie quarterback because they, they've had quarterback problems for quite some time. But he's bringing some stability to that organization right now, and he's proven himself to be a leader among the, uh, the team. The players are rallying around him, and he's just setting a really good example being a role model. He also has uh, 29 rushing attempts, which doesn't sound like a lot. But he's turned that into 132 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. So that's great to pad the stats. So there is even talk of him being in the MVP conversation. He's got like the fifth or the sixth best odds. He's in the conversation for MVP. He, I mean, if he would have kept up the trajectory he had in the, the uh, first eight or nine weeks of the season, then he could have very well been in there. I think that game where he threw three interceptions might sink this rookie's MVP candidacy as crazy as it is to say. And from what I understand, he might be the best rookie quarterback ever. He has put up records. I think he had a 500 yard passing game um, several weeks back. First time a rookie's ever done that. I think the, the MVP talk is premature. There's almost no way he wins MVP. It just isn't going to happen. Now, uh, offensive rookie of the year, yeah, I think he's got that in the bag at this point. The Texans are 6-5 and five right now. I think he's got a legitimate shot at leading them to the playoffs, but MVP overall, I just I don't see that happening. I think somebody like a, um, a Jalen Hurts is going to get that. Uh, Mahomes is always a favorite to get it, just on name recognition alone, but stats-wise, Mahomes isn't really doing that well. Uh, by his standards so far. But C.J. Stroud, um, him and uh, rookie uh, Tank Dell right now have an, a phenomenal connection. I think they've had rookie QB to rookie wide receiver, just a ton of touchdowns on the year. And I, I want to say that's trending to be a record, I think, once the season's over, if they keep up this pace. That connection that Stroud has with Tank Dell is awesome. And it's just so cool to see. It's like rookie with rookie, that connection, they can just keep building and building and building. And it's really, really cool to see that. Speaking of rookie, what is it? Isn't there a coach, a rookie coach as well? Correct. Uh, D'Amico Ryans, this is his first year uh, coaching the Houston Texans. Obviously he's got a Houston Texans background, but yeah, first year as a coach, He's uh, surpassing a lot of people's expectations right now. It's really cool. That's so cool to see. And I know our boy Sean's a big fan because he came over from 49er country before this. So it, it's it's cool. They're, they're a fun team to root for. I've been to a, Niner, uh, to a uh, Houston Texans game before. My buddy Michael, uh, shout out to Michael Shanks. Check him out, the Shankster. He's a musician from Houston, a good friend of mine. And he took me to a Texans game. And J.J. Watt just completely dominated the, the Dolphins quarterback. I think it was Tannehill. And it was like one of those monster blocks because J.J. Watt's so big, he like enveloped Tannehill, Tannehill and he just like took him to the ground. It was so cool to see. Anyway, Dave, I digress as well. We got to wrap this baby up. You're right. The producers are chirping in the ear. We're going to come back with, with another one of these actually and, and pretty soon. We're going to do another one and we'll, we'll get that out uh, soon. But we got to wrap this baby up. Uh, thanks everybody for tuning into the episode of the uh, four birdies podcast. And if you haven't already, then please like, and subscribe. It does help. I mean, just leave a, like a little note down there, say something, you know, if you don't agree with this list, if you think there's another QB who is more surprising this season, then let us know. Of course, we're, we're open to suggestion and persuasion. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see y'all next time. Peace. No, you got, you got to do it's four, not two, Dave. We did that already. Okay. You know.